What's good? It's your boy CJ Goodfellow. We back with Motor City Lions talk um, preview um, of Detroit Lions versus the Arizona Cardinals. Um, I'm ready. I know. Hopefully, everybody is out there. Also, is ready. Um, and uh, you know, this is week one. You know, finally, football is back this Sunday. And, you know, football, you know, for most people, kicks off on Thursday. And for one pride nation, kick, football kicks off Sunday, 1 p.m., four field. Trey Lyons taking on the Arizona Cardinals. Um, looking for tickets, try the Game Time app. Um, they have them as low as 51, uh, $51 in the, um, in the top section. Um, but big screen of, in, in the four field, and I've been to four field. Um, season ticket holder some years. Um, not a bad seat. I'm going to enjoy this one from the comforts of my home and bring you a, a review, a reaction video right after. But um, to get into it, man, Arizona was a team that lost a lot of close games. And that's it, ironic that Detroit Lions is a team that won a lot of close games last year. Polar opposites. They're looking to turn that corner. And um, um, if you don't, what you start with the Arizona Cardinals. If you're not familiar with Arizona, um, you've been under the rock. Um, since after their Super Bowl run and after the Kurt Warner run, um, you know, basically Carson Palmer's been up and down. He he was never the same quarterback after the injury he suffered. Um, that year I thought the Bengals were going to the Super Bowl with him and Chad Johnson. He uh, tore his leg up. He wasn't the same quarterback. Um, but I think he's the Achilles heel on this team. And I think they have a little couple more Achilles heel. That, and they're not the same team that – Blew out the Lions a couple years ago. But they do have, um, I don't think he was on the team when they blew him out. Maybe he was. But they have David Johnson, who should be uh, public enemy number one of the Detroit Lions locker room. Offense and defense. You must know who David Johnson is. David Johnson is a stud. In the backfield, lined up in the slot. You can line him up out wide. He can come out the backfield. He can block, catch. He's the jack of all trades. He's the number one running back in the NFL, in my opinion. He's been hot shit since he was a rookie because I had him on my fantasy team. If you stick around, I'll give you the fantasy studs from this game. But they also have um, a questionable offensive line that been up and down. Had Mikey Potty from the 49ers for a couple years. He's been up and down. Um... And uh, they just haven't meshed. They drafted Jonathan Cooper high. Now he's with the Dallas Cowboys, and then he's the starting left guard. Couldn't click for him, you know. Uh, protecting Carson Palmer has been an issue. And um, and Carson Palmer being healthy and taking a hit has been an issue. Um, when you get older, you don't get better. You, t- you tend to decline. Now, if you're talking about the Arizona Cardinal defense, I don't think it's one of the strongest uh, defense they had in years. But the front seven with the the, uh, the wild card, the joker, um, safety, kind of with Killer Brew might play for the Lions and Deion De- Buchanan, the middle linebacker slash strong safety, joker, um, you know, Tyron Honey, Badger Matthews coming back. You know, Patrick Peterson, we all know who he is. But I think Bethel won to start another cornerback. Don't quote me on that. And the nickel and a second cornerback, it's not hot as it usually be, but they do have Chandler Jones. Um, and they have a phenomenal front seven. But they did lose Calais Campbell. They had Robert Enemichi. They came from Ole Miss. And he's one of those uh, guys that made a stupid decision falling off the balcony in college at Ole Miss. So it's it's some question marks. It's not the same strong Arizona Cardinal defense. But the scheme is there. And they have the big playmakers. Now, we talk about the Detroit Lions. And there are, there's one golden question mark for me when it comes to Detroit Lions. And it's the ability to run the ball. You invest $130 million in Matthew Stafford, and they haven't had a, a good running game, I think, since James Stewart ran for, ran for that 1,000-yard season. And that's the issue with the Detroit Lions right there. They don't have the ability to run the ball between the tackles. Everybody likes Abdullah. Oh, he could bounce out tired. He's flashy. But you have to be able to. To go north and south is the quickest way to the end zone, John Madden used to say. And that's the issue. So one of the ways you can open up the run game is by spreading people out and taking the guys out the box. You know, but over Detroit Lions uh, history in the Matthew Stafford era and the Calvin Johnson era, even with Golden Tate, people didn't have to load the box up. Because they knew they could stop the Lions with their front four and their three linebackers to make up the front seven. You know. 
So the Lions need to get some respect. Abdullah was on good track last year. Can't stay healthy. Can't hold on to the ball. I think a healthy mix between three running backs. And if you throw in Teon Green, Teon Green, uh, I think his name, whatever his name is, on short yardage, I think you have a winner. You have to mix it up. Because all your, your backs have the ability to catch the ball out the backfield. You know, between Zinner and the two other theoretic and Amir Abdullah, so they gotta watch, they gotta really mix that up. You know, keep offenses, or keep defenses on their heels. If the Lions run the ball, they're a playoff team this year, at least on the offense side, the offensive side of the ball. Now you talk about the defense. Ziggy Ansah is 100% healthy. Um, we lost Kerry Hyder, but Cornelius Washington and Alshon Robinson have to step up. They have to make the jump. Washington needs to reach his p- pinnacle reach his peak this year or somewhere close to it. Jared Davis has to grow up quick. Paul Warlow being around the block. Um, don't like our linebackers, but I don't think it would be too much of a factor. I think Jared Davis would get better out the season. Um, and most of the time, you only got one or two linebackers on the field because most 70% of the time, not NFL is bringing out three receivers, and most people are playing nickel. Most defenses are playing nickel. The back end... <coughs> I think Nevin Lawson, Nevin Lawson is starting over DJ Hayden, I think. I don't know who's in the slot. I think that's a bad sign, in my opinion. I don't like Nevin Lawson. He doesn't turn around and play the ball. I don't care how much you improve. In training camp, I must see it on the field. So that's a weak spot. I forgot. I don't know who's playing the nickel. I just looked at the depth chart. Now, I like the safeties. I like Wilson. I like Glover Quinn. Glover Quinn kind of holds the back end together, him and Slay, and Hopefully everybody falls into place. Now talking in particulars, um, he's the victory for the Detroit Lions in this one. It's simple. Stop David Johnson and make the Arizona Cardinals one-dimensional and get after Carson Palmer. It's simple as that. You must know where Larry Fitzgerald is at all times. That's the one guy you must stop and John Brown, Brown from getting downfield and taking the top off. But you eliminate the John Brown factor, especially taking the top off, if you get after Carson Palmer and you you able to uh, make it uncomfortable for him. I think that's very, very important. I think the chain movers, Larry Fitzgerald, the possession receiver, and David Johnson come out the backfield and run the ball. They must stop the run. If the Arizona Cardinals are able to run the ball at will, the Lions have no shot in this game. It's just that simple. Because they run the ball, then they're able to play action, go over the top, then – You know, Johnson is able to go to the flats, run his routes, get isolation one-on-ones with Paul Warlow, whoever the nickel is and whoever the middle linebacker is, which is Jared Davis. It's going to be a long day. And guys like fucking, uh, excuse my language, uh, Jermaine Gresham is going to get off. Guys like Jawan, the Jawan guy, he's going to get off. You got to get after Palmer. You got to stop David Johnson. Those are the two things. If you do both of those things, Detroit Lions will be good on defense. Now you're talking about the offensive uh, game plan for the Detroit Lions. Um, you know, it's simple, man. You have to establish some running game. Uh, even if it's dink and dunking and letting Abdullah create in space, um, letting Theo Reddick get those one-on-one matchups versus those linebackers, um, you know, he's going to win. Both of those guys are going to win outside. You know, Chandler Jones can't stick with him. What if Kevin Minters, the middle linebacker, those guys are not going to stick with, with our running backs. But we have to be able to have some of a running game. Stafford can't drop back 40, 50 times in this game. If he does, he's going to get killed by Chandler Jones and, and, and their front seven. They create pressure off a of scheme. It's just not a one-man show. But it could be a one-man show because Chandler Jones is that damn good. Um, and it's, it's exploiting the nickel corner in the second corner. Whoever, you know, Patrick Peterson ain't guarding, that's who you got to eat up. I think Bethel, whoever the guy's name is starter for the Cardinals, can't hang. He shouldn't be able to hang with Marvin Jones. And the, the middle, the nickel, you know, physically, if uh, Kenny Galladay is on, they shouldn't be able to hang with Kenny Galladay, to be honest. Um, and, I mean, that's it. You know, it's it. I mean, it's simple as running the ball, you know, and blocking up front. For keeping Stafford clean, running the ball, you know, letting your running backs win in space, and let, and winning that slot, that, nick, that nickel corner position, winning that slot receiver position, and winning a secondary corner uh, corner uh, against a secondary corner position. It's pretty much that simple for the Detroit Lions. Um, you know, special teams again. Um, you know, Patrick Peterson. He, I don't know if he's going to be back there receiving punts, but in critical situations, he's is he's very dangerous. Um, we know um, we got to stop him. 
if he's returning punts. It's just a must. And um, do you throw away from Patrick Peterson is a good question that some people might have. Um, in this situation, yes, I throw against him. Now, if it's something like Patrick Peterson or something like they got in Denver with Chris Harris and um, Warobi and uh, Anquan, uh, I mean, uh, Tlaib, then, I mean, you, you just got to just gotta trust your receivers at that point. But with just one guy, Patrick Peterson, who does move and who might shadow Golden Tate, I mean, I would if he shadows Golden Tate, I would exclusively keep Golden Tate in the slot because it's harder to guard in the slot because when you're on the outside, you got the, the, the boundary that's protecting you, so you know that's your third defender, well, your secondary defender, and you're in the slot. It can go any which way, and I think Golden Tate is one of the best slot receivers in the game, and I think he can eat. Um, if Ebron plays, I don't know. I, I just don't like that guy. Too inconsistent. But um, overall, this is going to be a solid matchup. This is not the Arizona Cardinals who came in and whooped the shit out the Lions a couple years ago. This is a team that's trending down, but I did predict these guys to win their division. But now with the acquisition of Sheldon Richardson to Seattle, I don't know. But I like this team, but history tells me that Larry Fitzgerald and Carson Palmer age is going to show eventually. Um, but I just think David Johnson is too much. You know, I'm sorry. I don't know a lot about the Detroit Lions defense this year, and it's, it's a wild card. Since losing to Dominick and Sue, we haven't been the hottest. You know, um, you know, Levy had a hot year. Ziggy had a hot year. But we're in a transition mode right now. And um, I think I'm going to pick the Cardinals to win. You know, it's not that I'm, I'm, I don't want to be a homer. I just I just don't know. I, I think that team is a playoff caliber team, and I think the Lions have a potential to be a playoff caliber team as well. But they're at home. They are underdogs, the Lions at home. Um, but I, I, just like Arizona, I just like what Arizona brings to the table. It's no disrespect to one pride nation. Um, I think it's going to be hard for them to stop David Johnson. I understand that he's coming off injury, but he has played in the preseason. Um but David Johnson is just just a just a low man. He strikes fear just in me, and I'm not even on defense as a part of the Detroit Lions. But I can see the Lions winning this game. I really can. But you know, as a, as just as a betting man, I would go with Arizona. Um, but um, hopefully, the Lions do well. I'm pulling for the Lions. Don't get it wrong. I think the Lions have. I think they can win if they're able to run the ball. And, and get after Carson Palmer at least, or at least stop David Johnson and slow him down, they can win this game. You know, this is going to be one of the better games in week one. And this game is going to tell me how good the Lions are going to be. And, and if they win, it's going to be on the shoulders of that defense and Jim Bob Cooter, in my opinion.